Hey YouTube friends and family, how's everybody doing? Or maybe I ought to say, hey Google tubers, now that we're Google and YouTube. Not real keen on that. Anyway, I wanted to see how everybody's doing and do another video. In my last video, when I wished everybody a great, prosperous, and changing new year, I spoke about my lack of worry about what we should eat and not eat. In doing so, I failed to say that we are taking precautions. I watch very close what I purchase, and we try to stay away from all of the foods that are not good for us, you know, the GMO foods, even though it's really impossible to avoid them all. I'm sure all of you have found this out too. You know, I just refuse to worry about the ones that I know we do end up eating. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Worry is an extension to fear. It really is. And fear itself is a poison. It's something none of us need. We really don't. We live uh, today in troubling times. There's so much going on and it just seems like it's all piling in on us. One thing right after another. Today I have what I think is a very important message. And I hope, I really do with all my heart, that you stay and listen to the entire message. It is a message brought through genuine love and concern for each and every one of you. It certainly is. You know, back in the 1940s, 1940, 1941, and before, in America, the kitchens were basic equipment. Most of them had wood or coal-burning stoves that they cooked their meals on. And uh, they did their canning. You know, women spent countless hours preparing great dishes and homemade breads and desserts for their families. But they did it very simple, and yet it took a lot of work. They didn't have the conveniences of push-button like we do today. In 1946, Dr. Um, Percy Spencer, a self-taught engineer with the Raytheon Corporation. Now this 1946, and the name of the company was Raytheon, R-A-Y-T-H-E-O-N Corporation. He was testing a new vacuum tube called the magnetron, and he noticed that a candy bar that was in his pocket had melted. This discovery led him to further his investigation and works. He put a piece of popcorn in the area of his uh, magnetron tube and watched as the kernel began to pop. There, From there, you know, it led to the discovery of this microwave action. He put more popcorn in, and the popcorn was popping all over his office. And then he decided to do it with a an egg. And uh, I suspect that's when they figured out that you don't just put a whole egg in because the egg exploded and splattered on one of his co-workers that was curious about the experiment. He then took this energy and uh, the microwave energy and he put it in a metal box. So he encased his low density microwave energy and harnessed it all in a metal box so it couldn't escape. This then led to the revolutionizing of the everyday kitchen in America. The amazing speed in which the foods would heat and cook 
was for some very welcomed, though not always accepted, as many men and women feared the technology itself. By the way, I said Raytheon. Isn't that a weird name for a company? Uh, the company actually began in 1922. Raytheon. Just so you know, Raytheon Company is a major American defense contractor, an industrial corporation with core manufacturing concentrations in weapons and military and commercial electronics. It was previously involved in corporate and special mission aircraft until early 2007. Raytheon is the world's largest producer of guided missiles. So when you say the microwave was kind of alien technology, you might think of the name of, of the company also, Raytheon. And the reason I say that, you know, we might take note just for giggles, that the company's first product was a gaseous helium rectifier that was based on Charles Smith's earlier astronomical research of the star Zeta Puppis. Zeta Pupis Puppis P U P P I S. So his research of the star, that was the company's first product. The electron tube was christened with the name Raytheon, which means light of or light from the gods. Coincidence? You tell me. On October 8, 1945, Raytheon filed the U.S. patent for Spencer's microwave cooking process, first tested in a Boston restaurant in the year uh, 1945 through 46. Then in 1947, the company built the Radar Range, which was the first microwave oven in the world. So there you have it. You know, I remember my first encounter with a microwave oven. I knew nothing about the scientific field of radiation, microwaves, or anything of the like. However, a natural instinct inside me told me to stay away from it. And I did. I was afraid of it. As were many people. You know, the television, when it first came out, had its own fear-related fascination, too though the invention goes way back. I believe it was in the 1870s. People were frightened by it. Having this box that not only talked, but you could see a moving picture. People got afraid. Today's no different when we look around our ever-changing world. We find that we have more questions than answers more doubts than acceptance of change. And we have changes coming at us constantly. This causes conflicts, here in Google Tube especially. You know, the conflicts, as one person says, this is the way it is. Another person says, that can't be. Because history says that's just not the way it is. And uh, that is way out of the normal. That's not my normal. So they say, no, it's not. And the other guy says, oh, yes, it is. I found this. The problem is, you know, it's really hard to prove the things that we find. We might be looking up in the sky as is the case with, with myself and Hammer and my mother and the children looking up in the sky and we see an ab abnormal something, some kind of craft that 
is not anything we've ever seen before. Not only was it not something we had seen, but this craft made an an absolute perfect 45 degree turn. We don't have any crafts that we know of that can do that. So we see it, but when we tell somebody, like if I go to my neighbor and say, holy cow, we just saw, and the neighbor goes, yeah, right, it was probably a helicopter. It's hard to prove the things that we see today. It's even harder to prove if you have the ability to reach out and gain more information. Not everybody's capable of doing that. So we end up with conflict, and we see a lot of it. I think there's more people, uh, because history says it's not this way, you know, and, and that this is way out of our normal it's hard to prove, so it can't be. More people fall into that state of mind, the denial, than the acceptance state. Don't you agree? It's like, if I were in 1922 when Raytheon first became a company, and if I worked in that company and I said, you know, one of these days, before long, I'm going to invent a box, a metal box, that will cook food in minutes rather than hours. People would probably say I was crazy. Or if I said in the 1870s, I'm going to build a box where you'll be able to see people over in another state dancing, and you'll hear the music by watching this box, people would say, she's freaking crazy. And that's what we're running into today. You know, we've got HARP, the HARP program, a massive set of antennas that supposedly do one thing, but in fact can do many things including creating earthquakes. That's a proven fact, undeniable proven fact. And yet many people say it is nothing and that it cannot cause or create earthquakes, while many have to come forward with proof to the contrary, and they have. Still, even with the proof, we have a whole slew of people out here that go, no, 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 that's not true. In fact, it is. An earthquake in Mexico was proof of that. The hour, right down to the minute, was told. It was said where it was going to be. And by golly, it happened just that way. So, HARP technology we shouldn't have a conflict about that, but we do. Fracking. People who have had clean spring water, underground water from their wells to drink for generations find that when fracking is done on or near their properties, their water becomes poisoned, unpalatable, useless. Yet many people who are not affected by the technology perhaps those that live on city water rather than underground wells and springs, claim, no, 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 nothing wrong with fracking. We want that natural gas. So there's nothing wrong with fracking. Get over it. Grow up. Embrace new technology. At what expense? Fracking. When, when water is out there, guys, underground, aquifers, springs, eventually they all connect. And if we're getting poisoned water from all these chemicals, then uh, eventually, uh, eventually it's going to be a really bad situation. Fracking's very real. Certainly is. GMO foods. 
I don't know how many people deny that, and yet it's been proven. Genetically modified organisms being put into healthy, normal food, altering them and creating frankenfoods. That is not normal. It's been proven to be a very dire danger to the human body in time, causing things such as cancers and tumors. They've proven that with mice. Yet, many people still deny that they are not good for the human race and our food should be absolutely left to Mother Nature, natural and healthy. So we have a big conflict, big conflict. Chemtrailing, boy, that's a hair raiser. That's a big one. Many people balk and scream that there's nothing more out there than contrails, while others watch and know without a doubt that these trails are not normal contrails. Labs have proven the damage taking place to water, soil, plant life, vegetation, respiratory systems of all living things. Birds falling from the sky, bees, fish, bees dying off, fish dying, and other creatures are suffering from the proven fallout. Yet, the naysayers refuse to see or listen, while those that are having the effects, people suffering from Morgellons, respiratory problems such as my mother, Rosebush, many more. And the test, such as pff, lab test. You know, people suffering the harmful effects, bringing proof after proof forward, only to be called names and ridiculed. Conflict is an open door on this subject. Yet, if the naysayers would just collect their own information by gathering up and gathering up samples and doing lab tests, taking pictures, looking up, start by looking up, do some videos. Even the camera's eye catches the fallout. You can't miss it. It's terrible. Ben, Time Traveler, put out a fabulous video showing the fallout from chemtrails. We might very well just join together and save our lives and our planet. you got to remember what goes up does come down. Gravity, if nothing else. It comes down, guys, all these particles. You're ingesting them. Inhaling? You certainly are. And it's my understanding some of the nano particles are being absorbed in our skin. You need to quit saying nay, 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 and check into this. It is going to be a matter of life or death. Radiation from Fukushima. It's in our air, our water, our food, killing the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is going to be the next Dead Sea. The fish, sea life, and our children, and our children's children. Chernobyl was proof of that. Yet, we hear people saying, well, there ain't nothing I can do about it, so well. Or we hear, we hear, we hear. I don't believe it. I'm not sick. I feel fine. Well, isn't that just snappy? One might suggest that you uh, become better informed on how and when radiation attacks and kills. Yeah, conflicts. I say up, you say down. 
And until we get all the directions in order, who will ever know the truth? Or when the heck can we change things, guys? Seriously. How are you going to change things? We can't even get it together here on Google Tube. We cannot get the facts out with, without some troll or some people screaming and yelling and bickering and calling you a liar and saying you're, you're making it all up. It's a hoax. It is imperative that we get it together right now. We have many people here on Google Tube World who work diligently to bring tr truth to us. It is time that we pay attention and do what we can do individually, each and every one of us, or together in teams. Get together in teams. Call your subscribers in and say, look, we need you to do this. We need this test. We need that test. Gather up soil. Gather up water. Let's find out what this stuff's doing. Get independent labs. Get documentation. We need to do this. It's up to us. Oh, we can pray. Dear God, please take care of us. We can pray. But doesn't he help those who help themselves? Aren't we supposed to do our part? I think so. You know, we got to get it together and ready ourselves for the biggest fight of our lives. The fight for survival. We really do. UFOs, naysayers say there is no such thing. You have your Christians and people saying, yeah, don't read it in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Really? So the millions of people that have cited them taken pictures, actual footage, are all full of oatmeal. You may want to read the first book of your Bible once more, where God says that he created the worlds, plural. Alien life, you think that we're the only, first and only, and the last that God invented or created? You think humans are the most perfect and the only beings in the universe? A universe, I might add, that is much bigger today than it was just five years ago. I mean, science has discovered that we have not had the universe figured out at all. There truly is much more to the story. Much, much more to the story. So... However, it just can't be unless you have it right up and in your face. And then you'll swear that it's a hoax because it doesn't fit your normal. They have us so programmed by fear. Fear to see the past or to see past our own no noses. You know, fear to see the unexplained. We're afraid to, to uh, see or work on or figure out the unexplained. Which will always be unexplained as long as it is not accepted as a new and different. The unexplained is new and different. New creatures, new animals, new plants, new places, new worlds. Yeah. People have been finding truth and trying to bring it to us. But as long as we are caught up in ourselves and our own egos, we will not see it until it is too late to save ourselves or our world. There's people out here that spend so much time bringing the facts. Facts are microwaves are bad for us. Think about that when you're on a phone, cordless, wireless. 
Wi-Fi, cell phone. Harp is a weapon that will destroy and has been used to do so. Fracking is destroying our drinking water and it's getting worse every day they utilize this technology. All water routes connect eventually. Chemtrails are real. Poisonous solution being sprayed on us daily in heavy doses. Look up. Watch how they work. Watch how the line spreads and grows into something. And then the fallout comes. Watch how they work and remember what I said. What goes up must come down. UFOs are real. Alien life exists and your government knows this. And that's a fact. Franklin D. Roosevelt knew it. I'm not misleading you. Pay attention to people like Michael New, Ben Time Traveler, who is a time traveler, by the way. Yes, the technology is real and has been around for many years. It was probably given to us, probably shared with us from an outside source. Another one that comes to mind is Andrew Basiago. Yeah, time travel's real. Ben Time Traveler goes through a lot of abuse. The conflict, the naysaying, the accusations. It's terrible. And all he is trying to do is show you truth. BP Earth Watch. He spends countless hours trying to bring proof to you guys about some oddities out there. Nibiru Magic 2012. He brings to you the Fukushima information. Miss Milky the Clown. Countless hours. Beautiful videos. Trying to get us to pay attention. Aluminum Sky is working now on the Fukushima information. She needs subs. Jump in and check her channel out. J7409, bringing truth. Schmish, rumory, 321, truth. The JSB007, truth. UFOs. UFO Lou, truth. Gabor Zolna, truth about your government. And boy, does he bring a lot forward. He brings you stuff you need to think about. Ekene and Linda. Great wisdom. And the Indian way. The Indian way, the natural. Taking care of Earth. Manny Skywatch. He brought all the fibers, the fallout, the oddities, the strange things in the sky. The clouds that weren't normal. The sun that's not right. And he gets beat up pretty bad for telling you. There's many, many more, guys. I could go on and on and, and give you a whole list. But you you got to pay attention to the messages that these people are sharing with you. You really do. There is something in the, in the universe that's headed for Earth. That is why you see so much military action and movement taking place in the United States. You want to know why they're moving things? You want to know why they're setting up FEMA and, and coffins and all these things? Guys, oh boy, they know. But the big thing they know is that you will not listen. They know you won't listen. That you are going to call everybody else liars because it doesn't fit your normal. So they're banking on the fact that you will not be prepared. And you've got all these other people telling you, prepare. Prepare. I highly suggest that you stop bad-mouthing people, criticizing people, and creating conflict. 
that you sit up and pay attention and do what you can to prepare for your or the biggest event in our lifetimes and perhaps in the history of this earth as we know it. Which again I say is very, very incomplete. The history is very incomplete. Pray all you want. God does hear. But you need to get off your rears and listen and do what you can to save your own lives and families. 2014 will be drastically a, a, a drastic big change. It's going to be. It's going to be a drastic big change in, in ways that we live, in the way we see our universe, the way we see Earth, the way we see our government, the way we see each other. However, it will be the best year ever. It really will. Because we will be working together. We will have to. We have to. So get away from the ego and learn what you can to do to help each other and to protect your families and to be prepared in case of a natural or not so natural disaster. Whatever is coming in is very natural. Um, no fear. No fear. But guys, you need to pay attention. Listen to these people. They put it up right in front of you every day. Watch. At least that way you'll know what is going on. I love you all. I really sincerely do. And just like the microwave, who would have thunk? That wasn't normal. No. Some of the things we're going to find out are not going to fit our normal. But friends, trust me when I say, we can do this. We certainly can. And to all you people that are working so hard to bring all these facts and the truth, bravo, bravo and standing ovation. Thank you. Great big hugs, guys. And I'll catch you guys later.